I'm sure you've been very impressed with how Python allows us to work with all kinds of different data. And sometimes this can be a little troubling. Let's go into our Python shell for a moment and let's remind ourselves of something. Let me grab a value for x and let's get it from our end user. We're going to look at the input function in great detail in just a couple of videos from now. But remember, we can, as we see from the context sensitive help here, we can put in a string to function as a prompt. So I can say, give me a whole number, for example. And let me close the string indicator and then close the parentheses. And so when we run this, we are prompted to give a whole number. I'm going to give the number of 10. And when we print X, it sure looks like we have the number 10 for that variable X, but that's not true. Yeah, we have a string that is 10. And we can prove this by saying, go ahead and take X and add 10 to it. And sure enough, this is where we run against an error that says, hey, wait a minute, you're working with a string value, not an integer value as you might think. So one of the things that is wonderful inside of Python is our ability to take data and convert it as we need it. This is called typecasting. And let me give you some great examples of typecasting inside of Python. Yeah, there is a built-in to integer function. Sure, and the to integer function is going to do that integer conversion for us. So here on screen, you can say, I am saying integer or int, and then a value of 3.6. That is a float. So what do you expect to happen? Well, I think we should get a result of three, and that's exactly what happens. How about taking the two integer function and giving it a string? Yeah, so here I'm saying, give me an integer, and we have a string value of 12. And the two integer function says, no problem, there is your integer value of 12. Okay, you knew I had to do it. What if we say, hey, go ahead and give me an integer for the string of high. And sure enough, this produces an error. Yeah, Python has had enough. And it's saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Your string doesn't work out to be a number that I can represent as an integer. So I can't help you here. Another nice function that we have, as you might guess, built in is the to float function. So if I say float and then I give the number three, an integer number, Python will say, hey, wait a minute. No, 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 that's 3.0. Thank you very much. How about float and a string value of 12? Well, sure enough, you know what's going to happen, right? Based on our previous example, Python doesn't have a problem with this, and it says, okay, we'll make that 12.0. How about float true? Ooh, the Boolean expression of true. Do you remember what numeric value the Boolean expression of true gets? Yeah, it's a one. So I think if we do a float of true, I think we're going to get 1.0. By the way, remember, there's a lot of case sensitivity inside of Python. So if I were to say float and then true all in uppercase, this would return an error. Notice you can tell that you're in trouble, can't you? And that's due to the colorization. Yeah, when I typed in the Boolean expression of true properly, it was colorized orange by Python. When I typed it in in uppercase, no longer making it the Boolean value of true, 
it produced an error. And we had a visual clue there because, of course, it was not giving us that orange representation we would see with a keyword inside of Python. How about the toString function? Sure, we have a toString function. I could say, give me a string value. Notice it's str. And I could say, give me a string value for three. And it would say, okay, there you go. Notice it would place three in the string indicators. How about string 12.5, a float? No problem, 12.5 as a string. And how about giving us a string of the Boolean true? No problem. It will take the value of true and it will provide it to you as a string. So notice there are going to be functions inside of Python that are going to enable us to easily typecast. Yeah, to take a data type and convert it from one to another. There are other typecasting functions built into Python, but we're not covering all of them here. We don't need to be that comprehensive, and many of them involve data sets, which we haven't even explored yet. So typecasting, we love that we have this power inside of Splunk. And guess what? Inside of Python, excuse me. You can tell I often teach Splunk. And we've got one more to wrap this up with, by the way. It's the two Boolean function. I almost forgot it. How could I forget it? If we do a Boolean of zero, it's going to say, well, that equates to false. If we do a Boolean of hello, it says that equates to true. What's going on here? Well, anything other than zero is going to uh, equate to true. What if I go Boolean and then nothingness? Well, that'll be equating to false. Yeah, so an empty string is kind of like a zero. It'll equate to false. Boolean of a space would equate to true because there is something there. So the two Boolean function, pretty neat as well. I wanted to show you that one. And that function will wrap up our look at typecasting. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you'll be joining me in the next video where finally we are going to go deep into a function we've been using again and again and again already in this class. It's the print function. I'll see you there.